I am sorry to say, Deputy Chairman, sir, sometimes I keep wondering, and I don't want you to uh, chide me and remove it as being unparliamentary, but sometimes we have a diarrhea of words when we discuss, and there's constipation of action when it comes from there. There, what is required is economic empowerment of the Dalits. Unless you economically empower the Dalits, mere change of heart is not going to help. A change of heart can help one generation maybe, but the next generation, the same thing will happen. Raja Sapelin Lok Sapelin, Charche on the Rum. Mulsarka Adigara Metanation on Diamat the Gurse, Vecta Mat, CPM and General Secretary Ara, Sidara Maturi, and the Sabil Persang in Nund, Kilkanda Wakulana. In the another data of the Mana Ade on the Persang Sabil, Persang each other. Ah, Tipuri Walker, I'm going to Kelka. Now, sis, since this, this government has come into office in 2014, new avenues have been opened up for your attacks on Dalits. And these new avenues, one of them everybody is dealt with is the entire question of cow, cow protection. Now, cow is a venerated animal in our country, all of us know, but making it the issue for such attacks, and all of us know the absurd charges that were made for people who skin the, 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 I mean, who skin the dead cow for professional reasons that they have been attacked, all this we've been through. But this is a point to note, that this is a new factor for attacking the Dalits that has come into existence. Secondly, since this government has come, there's a new attack on the academia. We've seen what happened to the universities, you've seen what happened to Rohit Vemula, you've seen his, uh, you've heard his uh, suicide note that has just been read out to you. And all of us who have been connected with the universities know, out of the 25 students, sir, who committed suicide last year, 23 belong to the Dalits. 23 students in our country committed suicide last year, out of the total of 25, they are Dalits. Now this opens up a new avenue again of persecution, of repression against Dalits who are reaching uh, positions of excellence. This is a new feature that is happening since 2014. Another thing is the comments that are being made. You had a minister of this cabinet, he's still a minister who compared Dalits to dogs. Gadi chalti hai, to kutte mar jate hai. To us tarikhe se jo ho gaya. Abhi bhi hai, Sir Mantri. Abhi bhi hai, Shabad liye hai. Or, RSS. Nain, nain, go here. I'm sorry? You must say somebody has said it. Of course, I'm saying, the minister said it. It's not me, I'm telling you. I'm saying that the mindset that is being created, and you have, you have, a, that's why I said a minister, a minister for external affairs, I think external affairs, no? no MOS. Yeah, yeah. Not, not exactly. MOS, MOS, external, not defense. Uh, but, but he said, the ex-chief of the... No, Indian made your point. Yeah, yeah, okay, sir, I'm not naming, that's why I'm not naming. And, and then you have the RSS chief calling for a review of the reservation policy. A mindset is being created, sir, which I think is important, and therefore, if you want to look at the statistics, let me tell you, between 2013 and 2014, there's been an increase of 19% on the attacks on the Dalits that the National Crime Research Bureau has registered. 2014, 2015 figures have not yet come. 2014 is 47,064. 47,064 crimes against the Dalits. An increase of 19%. And out of this, sir, 1,27,341 cases are in trial. And what has been the conviction rate? The conviction rate is less than 5% at 5,102. This never happened. 2013, the conviction rate was 48%. In 2014, the conviction rate is less than 5%. 1,27,341 and the conviction is 5,102. This is statistics. You, you've talked, the Prime Minister talked very eloquently about Dalit entrepreneurs, about giving funds for Dalits to excel in industry, coming into industry. What is the state of affairs of your 
sub plan, sir. Planning Commission has been abandoned. So there's no plan in the country. So if there's no plan, can you have a sub plan for Dalits? You still have it. And what, what is the result of that sub plan that, that you have uh, uh, between 2013 2014? The sub plan has been reduced by 38% in this one year for Dalits. And the percentage, population wise percentage, to whom it should reach has dropped from 20% to 16.6%. And in the state of Gujarat, since you're talking of, let me take Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, or Haryana, all the BJP rural states, you see the incidence of these attacks growing. Now, if you want, I'll give you all the results, but I'm sure you won't have uh, given me the time for it. But a shocking thing from the Gujarat state government's report concerning the Dalit supply. What does it say, sir? Report I'm quoting. It says it was very difficult to take up area-based development exclusively for scheduled caste. Unquote. Shocking. You, you can never have a state government actually say this, saying that they cannot take this up. And the Prevention of Atrocities Act says there should be vigilance and monitoring. Chief Minister should chair the meeting in twice a year, once in every six months. It's never happened in Gujarat and there are no panel of lawyers that are assigned for Dalits in the case of these attacks so that they can call on them to defend them. Only state where there's no panel of lawyers. This is, this is what is happening. If you want, I'll give you the, deta the details for, uh, I have all of that here. And, and, and this is what I got from the parliament library on these attacks. You have many no, good no, points. Hang on. Please, sir, please, please, please hold on. <clears throat> Please hold on. Today, I'm not, I'm not yielding today. <laughs> I'm not yielding today because please, please. Well, very many things. But now here, come down to the question of your mindsets. Now, this is something which is very, very important for the last two years, which we must take into account. Because whether you call it ideological, mythological, theological, or philosophical, what has been happening now is that you have, what has been happening now I was waiting for you to settle down, Deputy Chairman, sir. <laughs> no, no, I was waiting for you to settle down in the seat, sir. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I, made a, I interrupted myself. Okay, so you. what I was talking about, all the statistics part is one, one element. We have all the statistics here, and the Parliament Library has given us all the statistics. That can be quoted. But the mindset, sir, that is happening for the last two years is something that really worries me. What is being bolstered in our country is a sense of obscurantism. You're going back into a sense of obscurantism where you're reaffirming once again that the status that you have in society today is because of the sins of your past birth. Unless you go through that today, you cannot correct yourself and be reborn in a better caste for the next year. Number one, that is the theological, philosophical, ideological obscurantism to you which you're going back. Second, that you will prevent any intercaste exchanges or marriages and the cup panchayats and all that that you have, that you prevent any sort of a cross mobility between these castes and treat them as four separate compartments. That is what the RSS has always talked of, the Varna Vyostha, the fourfold arrangement of the Hindu society, quote unquote. The fourfold arrangement of the Hindu society is the ideological backdrop that is creating this mindset. The third point, is that there is no upward mobility in terms of your profession. Manual scavengers will remain manual scavengers. They cannot move on to any other profession. And therefore, if anybody is educated as a Dalit student, if they reach something higher, that has to be prevented, and hence the attacks on Dalit students in universities and educational centers. So these three put together, sir, these three put together, you have a theological, philosophical mindset, of a question of birth, rebirth, that is depending on the sins of the past. And therefore, to atone the sins in the present, you will have to go through that status of being the Shudra. And therefore, second, you, you will say that the fourfold order, arrangement of the Hindu society, you cannot move from one to the other. You cannot gain any knowledge, whereby you will see, proceed, go back to mythology. 
go back to mythology and go back to all the stories in mythology where Eglavya's thumb will be cut. You will have Shambhuk who will be, because he is a Dalit, he will be cursed. And go back to that mythological trading. This is the mindset. This is the ideological backdrop that is encouraging these attacks on the Dalits today. And this is what that needs to be confronted and fought. And this, if we do not, then your cup panchayats will grow. Your upward mobility in terms of profession will not be allowed. Your intercaste marriages will be, I mean, already there's a big, uh, or uh, what you call uh, ban against it, or let's say a movement against it, that will worsen. And you'll have all these campaigns like Love Jihad and all, all these things growing up. And this is what is creating this mindset where these statistics that I quoted earlier can be confirmed as to why this is happening. So, sir, what is required to be done? Another discussion on atrocities in Dalits is not merely a discussion. I'm sorry to say, Deputy Chairman, sir. Sometimes I keep wondering, and I don't want you to uh, chide me and remove it as being unparliamentary, but sometimes we have a diarrhea of words when we discuss, and there's constipation of action when it comes from there. <laughs> ah, and these are not unparliamentary. They are not unparliamentary words, but they are strong words. And I'm saying it because I feel very strongly that that is what we can, we can voluminously speak but then what is the action, sir? What is the action that should follow? If the conviction rate has dropped, if the pendency rate is actually 5%, less than 5% of actually the cases that are being tried in the courts, what, what is it? 3%, is it? Yeah. My colleague collects, uh, corrects me, everybody, that it's only 3%. If that is the case, sir, what is the action that the government proposes? Yes, sir, Bhashan, we all know, sir, when we can all give, we can all give excellent, uh, I mean, uh, uh, peroration. We can all talk of the ideals of society, but in practice, what is happening? And the only one to correct it in practice is the government through actions. And that is why I'm urging upon this government not to please, not to please, once again, I'm urging the Home Minister to tell us, that every single subcaste or dimension of the Muslim society we can find in India, every particular caste or the angles of the uh, Christian society we find in India, that was the India that I remember. The India of the last two years is not that India. This is degenerating and therefore this ideological, theological mindset has to be corrected. And if that has to be corrected, it has to be matched with action in terms of practical terms, of convictions, of persecution of crime, prosecution of crimes, of the subplans that are being to, that have to be implemented for the development, of protecting Dalit students and intellectuals who are coming to the levels of an upward mobility instead of attacking them. All these need to be done along with giving the protection on the ground to people who can be, who can be and are being, are being, I mean, I mean most at, uh, worst atrocities being committed against them on the basis of allegations and rumors. Now, if this has to stop, sir, I'll only end by making one last appeal. What is required is not a change of heart. Mahatma Gandhi gave us the slogan of Harijan. Jyoti Bafule, Shahu Maharaj, Baba Sahib Ambedkar. We had all these very, very big leaders who can continue, continue to evoke, evoke sympathy and empathy amongst the people where crores of people can be mobilized on their names. But why is the situation not changing on the ground? There, what is required is economic empowerment of the Dalits. Unless you economically empower the Dalits, Mere change of heart is not going to help. A change of heart can help one generation maybe, but the next generation, the same thing will happen. So therefore, my appeal through you to the government is that apart from taking firm action against these perpetrators of these crimes, apart from improving their rate of conviction, apart from setting up all the legal mechanisms that have been mandated by the Constitution and the laws that we have passed in this House. 
apart from sticking to the sub plan in terms of the population of the Dalits and the SC sub plan to be properly implemented, apart from all these things, to also come back to the question of what the Constitution enjoins all of us to encourage the spirit of scientific temper. Encouraging the spirit of scientific temper, that is a job that is, we are enjoined, sir. We, that's a duty. Not the mythological temper. No, scientific temper. Not mythological or theological or philosophical, but scientific temper. And that is, sir, we are enjoined as duties under the Constitution. Fundamental rights, but there's one chapter on the duties, which we forget. That is our duty as parliamentarians to ensure that the duty of the government to implement that. And that scientific temper needs to be brought into place and the economic empowerment of the Dalits has to be brought into place. Otherwise, such atrocities of calling our respected leaders of what we have heard yesterday, atrocious, obnoxious, cannot be acceptable. Such things will continue because they're emboldened by this mindset. These people are being emboldened by this mindset to say such things which were unheard of even a couple of years ago. That mindset has to change. For that, I'm urging through you, the government, to take action on, these, on, on, on all these uh, aspects and come back to the question of encouraging scientific temper. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.